Welcome back to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're focused today on Phoenix, Arizona and plans for the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. That trade show, by the way, is the largest cattle industry trade show with hundreds of exhibitors. In Phoenix, it'll cover more than six acres and you'll be able to find anything and everything to do with the cattle business from tractors and balers to working chutes and cowboy boots. It's all there for you. And after some time in the trade show, you may be looking for a great steak. In fact, our friend Brian Baxter has been on a scouting mission to track down an outstanding steakhouse. And in Phoenix, he found more than a few to check out. After you blaze a trail through the desert and make your way across more than six acres of displays at the NCBA trade show, then you just might be ready to find a great steak. And in Phoenix, you won't be disappointed. This is a beef town. If you prefer historic and traditional, then the stockyards may be the choice for you. It's known as the city's original steakhouse. It was founded in 1947 on the site of the Phoenix Stockyards. The original Phoenix Stockyards were established in 1919 on this site. And so as the uh, stockyards grew, there became 200 acres, 40,000 head of cattle. So a lot of cowboys. So they opened a cafe in 1947. There was a fire in 1953, and then the restaurant was built big like this in 1954. And the bar was added, the murals were added, a lot of the other features in the restaurant were added at that time. 1889 Saloon is because the original brand, the first registered brand in Arizona, was the Circle Walking L, and that was the Tobri family brand. The Tobris established the pens and the restaurants, and so it was uh, registered in 1889. From dark wood paneling to low lighting and stiff drinks, the Stockyards is the perfect combination of history and great aged steaks. Ribeye is a great steak. Uh, we have New York Strip. We've got a nice uh, 20 ounce porterhouse. We've got different sizes and we've got every prime cut you're looking for. So It's a landmark. It's, uh, it's very well known and there's very little like it. We'd love to have all of your attendees come in and check it out. Just check out the history, check out the, uh, the old historic photos, the hand carved bar. We'd love to get as many of your group in as possible and show the place off to them. I think they'd really enjoy it. While the traditional steakhouse is always a great choice, if you're looking for something a little different, then check out one of the newcomers to the Phoenix Steakhouse scene, Steak 44. Steak 44 was the second restaurant we opened up after we had sold our company in the past. We decided to go with market trends just a little bit more. People were looking for a little more variety, less large portions. So we made uh, a, a, a smaller portions on steaks and also had the bigger portions available. We tried to modernize the steakhouse uh, as you know it. And in the kitchen, glassed it in so everybody could see what we're doing, which made it fantastic for the guests. And also we kept with what we normally do and that's cut all beef in house work with the same company to make sure things age right. I go visit the farms and make sure that everything is up to standards on what I do. And we just have a very good relationship with what we, do, what we get our product from. I always look for a top end and prime, and we also have some Wagyu cuts that come out of Pacific Northwest. Uh, I've been working a little bit with domestic Wagyu that's been be being bred with uh, Angus, obviously. That's kind of a common thing right now. Um, and trying to work those into what we do, not make it a, a focal point, but give variety. It's all about variety. And for a little wow factor at mealtime, along with the great steak, head to Scottsdale and check out the rooftop poolside dining at Dominic's. Well, Dominic's Steakhouse came from uh, the Mastro family's grandfather, and uh, it was it was their grandfather's name, so that's how the restaurant name came about. Um, it's either granite or marble from pretty much ceiling to, to floor. Big marble bar top that goes to a gigantic uh, liquor display that's lit from underneath. And then there's an upstairs and we have a reflection pool on the upstairs. So it's about 16 inches deep. You dine around it. The roof opens up so you can have open air and with the water, the sound of the water. It's just a nice, nice feature. 
The dining experience might be different in all three places, but one thing you can count on, beef is the star on each steakhouse menu. The Sterling Silver brand that we use is extremely consistent on the marbling, the, the size of the eye on the ribeyes, the marbling on it. Uh, I think it's just come a long way. And the, the cattlemen I talk to say there's a lot more technology being used now that when you see the animals in the feedlots, that the chassis all looks the same and they, they really kind of got the thing down. So consistency is really the key for me. And I think the beef industry is doing a fantastic job at that. You know, I've actually had the pleasure of talking to a lot of cattle producers and the different things that I've done across the year. And what I always, since I'm the end user, I, I always tell them the same thing on what I see in beef. Um, the quality I see. I just always try to tell them the, the, the same thing, that the, the end result on what they go for and the end result in what they're doing is a fantastic steak in front of a guest that I want to come back. So don't miss your chance to try some signature steaks and put some extra sizzle in your visit to Phoenix. I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman.